baby. We gotta win this one. Out the jump, let's go. Let's go, man, let's go. Here we go. This is about to be a lit day today. Hey, let's get back to our swagger, come on. All of them get the dough down. They get the dough down. Okay, meet at the quarterback. Well, well, welcome inside the TCO studios for another edition of the Audible presented by 3M. I'm Gabe, that's Tatum, and uh, today we have the two guys on the show that have been the talk of the town at least the past couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to start with my far right, uh, Mr. Chandon Sullivan, a.k.a. Sully, and then Duke Says Go, Duke Shelley. Uh, both of you guys making plays the past couple of weeks, but um, I, I got to start this show off with the obvious, right? You know, we come back 33 to 0 uh, to beat the Indianapolis Colts, December right. football, mm -hmm. final seconds. And um, the first thing that came to mind afterwards was like, okay, it's December, 33 to 0. Um, personally, I can't speak for Tatum, um, but when it comes to December 22nd, when this show comes out, I'm down 22 to 0 when it comes to Christmas shopping. <laughs> I'm not sure where you guys are, but uh, – I'm a last minute guy. Okay, too. so same. so what's your record when it comes same, to Christmas? I'm I'm over whatever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you got other things anything. to worry about right now. <laughs> like I'm so last minute with stuff like that. Uh, oh same. my god. What does it look like? It looks like me going to the mall today to get something <laughs> really to get for Thursday. I haven't got anything. That's what yet, it looked so. like. For me. Hold on, say that one We have time? DB Gift Exchange on Thursday, and I don't think either one of us. Is. Yeah, we got to oh. go to the mall. Yeah, so. Have you put some thought into those? Oh, not sure, really. Sure. Not I, me. I oh, okay. <laughs> I think I got a, in my head yeah, like what I'm gonna go get. Like okay. I don't like spend too much time at the mall, so I'm kind of in and out guy. Yeah. Mm. Go straight to the store I need, get what I want. I'm up out of there. But that's how it start. You go in the store, you need one thing, and then you're just like, ah, man, that that looks good too. Fall for the bait. Fall for the bait. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we start this this show off with um, a game called Two Truths and a Lie. Um, I, I gave you guys a little rundown of what it is. You got two cue cards in front of you. Uh, Chan, you know what, Duke? We're gonna we're gonna start with you. I have, have you. I have you. I got your card. My card? You gotta, yeah, you haven't looked at yours yet. Ooh. And then you got to read it to our radio audience, and then. Chan, it's up. I want to call you Chan. I want to call you Sully. Uh, Chan and Sullivan, it's up to you to figure out which two sentences are true right. and which one's a lie. Let's do it. Okay, cool. All right, this is the first one. I played Pop Warner football as a kid with Vikings linebacker DJ Warner. B, I finished my college career at Kansas State as a fourth in school history in fumble coverage for a touchdown. Okay. And C, my first name is Yaquish the second, but my grandma nicknamed me Duke because she thought of a, because she thought of a Duke like being a prince. Okay, so A is true. Yeah. C is true. B is yeah. correct. Okay. Very <laughs> nice. Okay. Process of elimination. Yeah, huh? yeah. What, what makes the B a lie? Uh, I didn't finish Kansas State fourth in, in okay. fumble recovery. But he did I think, pick sixes, though. Yeah, pick sixes, I finished fourth, but Got not it. but not fumble recovery. I knew that there was a truth I'm hidden top in that fourth, element. I think, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was trying to be a little times. petty, too, honestly, when it came to fumble recoveries for a touchdown. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, your name. Yeah. Everybody knows you as Duke. Right. What does your name mean? Yaquis okay. is, my, is my government name. It means uh, bold leader. I'm okay. a junior. I'm actually a junior, so... Uh, I named my son the third, so I just like to keep the name going. I feel like it's something in the name with my attitude. I don't know. Does yeah. your son have a nickname too? Not yet. Not we yet. haven't came up with one. We we called him Trey at first. Yeah. Fuck, cause three Trey. Yeah. But uh, getting kind of stick. Sun stick. Yeah. Sun so him. it's probably see when he get older. I get it. I mean, I, I, probably I'm, growing to something. <laughs> but your dad's senior, right? Like, right. I, I mean, if you don't follow Duke's dad on Twitter. You're missing out. Like Man. one of the You're most not even. Are you on Twitter? I am on Twitter. Okay, I couldn't find you, Not as so. active as him, though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but like, Crazy. man, I didn't know he turned down an offer to play at the University of Tennessee. Yeah, like he, he could have been a national champion. Yeah, he could have. Describe that. So he, coming out of high school, um, him and my mom trying to be grown, being fast. She ended up pregnant um, before he went off to school okay. with my sister. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we a year apart, so. I think at the time my dad was like 18, okay. mom 17, turned 18. So uh, growing up, he didn't have a father figure in his life, so that's pretty big for him. Uh, he was going through ministry at the time, and he decided that he wanted to stay home and mm -hmm. go into ministry instead of going to Tennessee. So it worked out. It did. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. That's, that's powerful. Chan, what's up? The floor is yours. My time? Okay. Woo! Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right. I majored in broadcast communications at Georgia State with future aspirations of being the next Stephen A. Smith. Mm. 
I was one of the 13 finalists for the William V. Campbell Trophy, which is given to the top scholar athlete in the country. I love that he did that. And I wore number 39 because my favorite player growing up, Steven Jackson, who played running back for the Falcons. Okay, I'm going to go with A and B true. C is not true. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even a running back. There you go. <laughs> That's it. So the trophy, mm-hmm. like the being one of the 13 finalists, like yeah. that, that had to be something that you, yeah. your family, everybody was proud of coming out of Georgia State, right? Sure. I mean, definitely. Just since growing up, my dad harped on the classroom. You know, he didn't really care about the football field or any of the sports. He wanted us to be the best on and off the field. So like since high school, I tried my best to make straight A's, try to keep a 4.0 GPA. And I didn't even know they had awards like this. You know, I'm gonna be real with you. So, you know, I didn't know what it was at first, but then, you know, after my research and going through the process, I was like, man, it's pretty cool. Well, one thing y'all could probably discuss because, dude, you were a communications major also. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. what did you want to do with your degree? Man, me, I, I was on the same path as Sully. Okay. But I mean, it's kind of hard for me the more I got into it mm-hmm. for, to sit around and kind of talk about people. <laughs> that was my biggest thing, because uh, I know how hard guys, you know, work and things like that. To to be a critic and try to, you know, it, it just comes with it, the good and the bad. It's kind of hard for me to talk about the bad. I'm just like a positive person. So I just want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Like, he might have got beat right here, but it's kind of what happened. Now, you know, yeah, even yeah. he could be dead wrong. But it's just hard for me to kind of point that out on guys. So I kind of You definitely that. wouldn't be the first former Viking, former K-State broad <laughs> turned broadcaster. That, that is true. If that yeah. were the case, that Ben Lieber. Yeah. Um, obviously, were you, um, how much did you know about Ben? Or did you even know him when, when you came here? No, I didn't know he, I knew Ben he, well, um, before I came here, but I didn't know he was here. Okay. So when I got here, and um, we reached out to each other and connected and things like that. It was pretty cool because I remember when I was in college, Ben was uh, keeping up with K-State and things like that. And um, he had a segment, like my last college game. And he like uh, he basically put me on the map to be like the best uh, player of the week in the nation that week. I had a two interception game and he kind of like broadcast that for me and kind of got my name out there. A lot, a lot more exposure. So I've been been good to me the whole time, man. We we chop it up every week. We definitely talk about K State football. So he's a good guy. That's awesome. that's that's awesome, man. And like you know, understanding that you know, I know Chan for you being in the same profession. Like, mm-hmm. is there something about the the broadcasting realm of sports that that interested you at a young age? Uh, like I said, just watching like Stephen A and just seeing how you're able to debate about certain sports and, and express your opinion in a way that the world can see, you know, so that's what attracted me because like I told you earlier, you know, my mom always said you're going to be a lawyer or you're going to be a, a broadcast, you're going to be an analyst, you're going to do something because you just love to talk, you know, and it's kind of funny because if you know me, I'm so like chill, but once, you know, I open up, it's, yeah. you know, so. Now you guys are around the same age, mm-hmm. both from the Atlanta area, yeah. about an hour apart from each other. Yeah. Did you know much about one another in high school? So I knew of I knew of him. We like mm-hmm. kind of hang with the same group of guys. So especially in college when he was at Georgia State, like uh, one of my close friends out of high school uh, and Sully used to hang out a lot. So, you know, being that he played the same position as me, you know, you kind of look at that and things like that. So I knew of him, but we didn't know each other personally until actually we got here. So. That's pretty cool. It's cool. I mean, I just being, Tatum and I are both from the South, so like, mm-hmm. For me personally, I know like the the what Atlanta means to America mm-hmm. as far as like just the city, the yeah. culture. I mean, Atlanta is infused in everything. Right. For you guys, what does Atlanta mean to you? Uh, I just feel like what they say, we the wave right now. We the wave. We the wave. So yeah. it's music, um, fashion, yeah, uh, just influence overall. You know, I just feel like Atlanta and just the South in general has I, like a lot of you know influence yeah. on the world. Yeah, definitely piggyback off that. I think the influence that Atlanta has on everywhere else is. It's shown, <laughs> even like uh, how we do things, you know, in our in in our room, sayings that we may say and things like that. Like people what? pick on that. Just a little ad libs. We sense. call each other like gang. Like I, I might come in and what's up, gang? Yeah. Like that's just like what's up, dude? Like what's up, guy? Like 
everybody else just picked up on that. I walked by the trainers in the training room. What's up, gang? You know, it's just <laughs> now everybody's saying it like it's just mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. We we trying to start, like start the way. We trying to start the way. Well, and then, and then you've got P two. <laughs> <laughs> you've got P two who lives there now too. Yep, so there's yeah, a lot of that now. Georgia influence wow, in the DB that. room. That's a For nice sure. area. Pretty too. cool, nice area. Nice area. Nice area. <laughs> I want to be like P two when I grow up. I tell them that all the time. It's funny how you get older and you're just like, oh man, nice area. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Quiet, good schools. Great schools for my kids. Great. Like really mm-hmm. good stuff. Right. Your, your whole perspective of, of life change. But uh, sure. speaking of perspective, um, KJ Osborne, uh, Vikings wide receiver, a mm-hmm. guy that you guys know very well. He partnered with the Salvation Army this holiday season, mm-hmm. uh, providing rent for four families over the holidays. Oh, he wow. did one in Michigan. He did uh, three families here in Minnesota. Uh, so I just want to give a huge thank you and a huge shout out to KJ uh, Salvation Army. Uh, for doing that. The full article will be on Vikings.com in a couple of weeks, so stay tuned to that. But if you also want to make a difference uh, this holiday season, text SKOL to 24365 and donate $25. Register to volunteer or give online at www.salvationarmynorth.org slash Vikings. Um, when we get back from the break, uh, Sully, the, the conversation all week is about the two fumble recoveries that should have been touchdowns. <laughs> Um, I'm going to just leave it at that because I got to get your opinion on that. We'll be right back with more Mm. of the Audible presented by 3M. Heard me. All right, we are back. This is the Audible presented by 3M. Man, I just had a little high pitch in my voice. (laughs) But this is the Audible presented by 3M. (laughs) Um, I'm Gabe Henderson. That's Tatum Everett. Uh, We got Shannon Sullivan here. We got Duke Shelley and uh, fellas. We were talking about this past week against the Indianapolis Colts. Mm -hmm. I I know we can't go into too much detail Mm -hmm. about uh, the fumble recovery. I don't want to get you guys fined. (laughs) But Chan, on Twitter, you've been going crazy, man. Like, can you describe your tweets? Uh, I just simply just, not questioned, but I just wanted to get some clarification on what happened, you know, because I still don't really feel like I understand. But, you know, in the first situation, it was a third and ten. Uh, the receiver caught the ball, and I just kind of, you know, do what we do in practice, try to go for the ball, and I stripped it out clean. Uh, and I guess they said the whistle was blown, but we got the best fans, you know, in the environment in the NFL, so I, we couldn't hear anything. So I scooped it up. I got lead blocks in front of me, and I score. I turn around, and I don't see the refs putting their hands up. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> kind of waved that away, you know, all right, whatever, cool. And then the fourth quarter comes around again, and a similar situation happens, and I don't know if the play was blown dead. I don't know what happened. And yeah, I wasn't happy about that one. I kind of lost control. It's you don't good. seem very happy about it either. Still. I, he better than me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, that's that's wild. I mean, I can't probably say too much, but of course. he's better than me. Yes, I, I'm, I'm hurting for him to this so, day. And, and much has been made about Patrick Peterson talking yeah. to the offense at yeah. halftime. Do yeah. you guys remember him addressing that with them? And, and did you believe in what he was saying, or did you think it was kind of like tongue-in-cheek? Oh, no. Nah, it's, it's so crazy how this team is. Like, it's weird. I can't – It's it was like a blur the first half. We get in at halftime and Pat telling everybody, it's five touchdowns, nothing. You know, and you believe it, though. It's not like <laughs> – it's not like it's so far fetched. It's like it actually can happen, you know. And I remember when we f- scored the first touchdown. And I'm sitting next to Cam on the sideline. I tell him, I say, man, we we finna win the game. I, well, I don't know why I feel like we just finna win the game. We down 36 to seven, you know. <laughs> it, it, it's midway through the third right. quarter. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. But like the sideline was just so calm at the time of crisis, and everybody just one play at a time, one play at a time. And, you just felt the momentum switch. Once the momentum got turned over and the crowd got behind us, it was yeah, a wrap. Crazy. It was a wrap. Yeah. What, what does what, what does that say about this team? The fact that like we continue to win these close games. What does that say about the mindset? It's just we don't quit. We don't blink. We don't panic. Yeah. We find a way. You know, I say it all the time. We're gonna find a way to win. Mm-hmm. So like even when we had time last week, like Duke said, it was a blur. We kind of was a little in shock. We was like, what mm-hmm. is going on? But at the same time, we knew we're still in this game. So right. we came out there and did exactly what we said we were going to do, play by play, create turnovers, get the ball back to Kirk and the offense. They're going to take care of the rest. And right. that's exactly what happened. We've Called got it. a former Bear 
a former Packer, mm -hmm. and then a kid from the South who mm -hmm. won his fourth straight NFC North title. Yeah, it's just kind of crazy. crazy how everything's been unfolding. But what was it like to, I mean, what is it like to get four straight division titles, first of all? It's wild. Congratulations. Know. Yeah, Appreciate I know, right? it. <laughs> Appreciate big. it. Oh, it's wild. You know, I'm an undrafted kid. My story's a little different than everybody else. Yeah. So, you know, to be in year five and Continue to stay consistent and just being on a winning team is, is, is everything to me. So, you know. And what, what's the meaning of winning the North? We got it on lock. Yeah. This is how <laughs> I describe it. I'm, I'm not playing you know, with me. You know, me, I, this is my first time walking. I'm walking into this. You know, I was blessed to be picked up here and walking into a team that was already built. So for me, it was like, take it personal, not being the reason that we didn't win. You know, it's kind of more like you're blessed enough to be in this situation. So, Show them, show them that you that you appreciate it, you know. So I'm just blessed, man, to be a part of the situation, to be a starting in Chicago, being let go, and can go anywhere, 31 other teams, and you just still here in the North, getting get a chance to compete and actually turn around and win. It's just all a, mm -hmm. it's a blessing. It's just God's timing. Does it? I mean, I, I know we got we got the Giants this upcoming Saturday, mm -hmm. but the last the next two games are against you guys as former teams. Yeah. Like playing against your former teams <laughs> in the division, Chicago Bears for Duke, uh, Green Bay Packers for for you, Sully. Does playing for those former teams does that help when you go against them later in the year? Oh, and how? For sure. Yeah, for me, I take every game personal, every team, because like I said, I'm undrafted kid. So I sat here and watched every one of these teams pass me up. So every week, I'm mad about something. So even, if, <laughs> even, even if I'm fake mad, I'm mad about something. But then when you play like a team who, you know, might have released you or whatever the case may be, it's a kind of an extra fire there. Yeah, same. same. I got uh Chicago game circling on my calendar since, since the day I got here. For sure. Both of them. I was hoping I got to play the first game. Just I don't care if it was run down on special teams. Like, I just wanted to get in the game. But it's definitely going to have a... Uh, a little more fire under me when we go down to Chicago at the end of the year. You feel blessed being here, but yeah. the Colts game, you played all 79 yeah. snaps. You were the highest graded player, defensive player per pro football focus. Mm -hmm. Being here has meant a lot to you, and you play with a certain kind of chippiness. Yeah. Where does that come from? From Atlanta, that's what yeah. it is. <laughs> that's, <laughs> there we go. He said it, he said it. <laughs> but I, um, you know me, I'm not, a big, I'm not the biggest guy on the field. You know, and it just it just brings a, a chip on my shoulder. I just feel like growing up, uh, my dad always, you know, instilled the confidence in me and things like that. So uh, now I just, the things I do and you guys see now is just second nature. It's not like I think about it, it's just things that just come out playing the game with the passion and the emotion that I play with, it just comes out. And I mean, it's, it stands out on film and other people, you know, look at it like, Hey man, you fiery, fiery guy, and this and this and that. But I mean, that's just that's the only way I know how to play the game, honestly. So I mean, Kevin O'Connell said, you know, you continue to show up and show out every single snap, every single week, and, and yeah. we could probably say the same thing, same thing about you, uh, Sully. You had 70 snaps right. uh, last mm -hmm. week, but you know, for you, Sully, what what motivates you? Like, what motivates you outside of you know, I got picked up, passed up by every team. Yeah. When you go back to your childhood, what motivates you? Uh, I think it was my pops, you know. When I told him I wanted to play football when I was eight, he, he let me understand that it's a lot of people that want to do this. You know, how are you going to separate yourself? How are you going to put yourself in position? And I'm in position now, so I can't ever take it for granted. You know, there's so many people in my hometown and where I grew up that would love, you know, trade this experience like this. So I, every day I come to work, I try to get better. You know, I try to prove myself right. I know what I'm capable of. It's just a matter of the world seeing it too, so. What's yeah. it been like getting to know each other? I mean, you guys seem like you're pretty tight. Yeah. At the room, the DB's room's pretty mm -hmm. tight. What's it been like getting to know? We sit right next to each other. <laughs> yeah, <you> sit right <laughs> Do y'all really? <laughs> yeah, literally, literally sit right next to each other, like, from day one. Sully, man, one of the guys who just welcomed me in. Like I said, I'm blessed to walk into mm -hmm. a room with Harrison Smith and Patrick Peterson and things like that. And then you got guys like Sully who just bring you in and make you feel like at home. And, you know, it's... You know, you got different different rooms, there's different guys in there. You might not get the same kind of welcoming. You know, guys might look at you like you coming in here to take my spot. So they might not treat you the same, but I didn't get none of that here. You know, everybody welcome each other in. It's like a, more of a brotherhood. So yeah. I just thank those guys, man, for just allowing me to come in and mm -hmm. be myself, you know, so. Yeah. It's Definitely. funny, you said the same thing. I think I saw an interview where they asked you about being mm -hmm. in this room and you were like being around guys like P2 and Harrison mm -hmm. Smith. How has that experience been? 
it's it's really cool. Like it's weird. Like it's like we've been together for years. Right. And a lot of us have just got here. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I made the argument we got the closest room in the whole building. You know, the D B room, we are really close. We hang out with each other outside of football all the time. We just discuss yeah. where we're going to eat dinner tonight. Yeah. You know? Like <laughs> just simple stuff. So it's just really cool, especially you got guys like Harrison and P two. They don't have to do what they do for young guys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're established on their way to the Hall of Fame, they have all the accolades. But they act like they're normal people. You right. know, there's no egos, there's no attitudes. And P2 is the first one to try to org- you know, organize something for everybody to come together. He don't have right. to do that. He He's the organizer? Kids. Yeah. He organizes everything. He's like the dad in the room. He's the dad. He, he is. <laughs> we call him uncle. For uncle real. P, so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Funny, so, that is that's funny. funny. Uh, one, one thing that you, you guys have in common also is uh, I know, Duke, when you were in Chicago, you played nickel mm-hmm. cornerback. Chang, yeah. you're the nickel cornerback here for the Vikings. Uh, what are some traits that separate the uh, outside cornerback and a uh, nickel cornerback that fans may not know about? Hats off to nickel. Uh, okay, uh, that's just the easiest way to put it. The nickel is the hardest position in the secondary. Wow. Like you are inside, you're playing linebacker, you got to deal with guards pulling and things like that. And then you get in, in space and you line up in a slot receiver with a fastest, probably most quickest guy. Who can got who can go two ways on you because the sideline's not there to protect you. So I feel like from my experience, that's why I tell Sully all the time, like, man, hats off to you the way you're playing, because I know how hard it is in the slot. And being on the outside, me personally, I feel like it's easier. You know, I, I just it it is. Honestly, the, the the throw takes longer to get there. You know, it's just things like that that you look at. And the way he's been playing, it's he's probably the best nickel in the game right now. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, hats off to him, man. The way the way that, the way that he do it, man, is just he on another level right now, man. Is real. it a mindset? Oh, it's a mindset, but uh, you just gotta accept the challenge, like I said. But the thing that intrigues me about the nickel position, I'm able to show my versatility. You have to tackle, you got to blitz, you got to zone draw, you got to play man, you got to set the defense in certain situations. Mm-hmm. So it's it's fun, but you know, I wouldn't trade it. You know, he played, he's going outside and playing corner, so that's showing his versatility. Yeah. And, you know, when you go outside, you might be on the island for real with the, <laughs> maybe the best receiver in the game. And he hasn't blinked all, you know, all year. And he talks about it in practice. He tells us exactly what he's going to do and does it in the game. So I'm just like, I need to know your secrets. I need to know what <laughs> prayers you're saying. You know, so I'm happy. Oh, for man. I love that. Well, we need to wrap up the show pretty soon, but I did want to ask you guys before <clears throat> we go, a winter whiteout on mm-hmm. Saturday. You yeah. get to wear the all whites. The fans are asked to wear white. What do you think that's gonna look like, dude? Like a like snow. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like snow. I, I, I love the pregame when we had a little snowflakes coming down. Not Everybody me. gonna be in all white. It's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> I can't wait for it. Are you a big all white uniform guy? Uh, sure. I guess so. Yeah. Sure, it's okay. gonna be cool. I know it's gonna be loud, so that's why I'm ready for. Yeah. It's gonna be really loud. So I'm gonna be white. Yeah. Really? What? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and it's breaking news. Yeah. Oh, wow. See, that? that's breaking yeah. news for there me. I didn't know that. I Maybe I shouldn't have told you. Mm. Now, well, they say Ooh. if you look good, you play good, and you feel good, you're going to be good. Mm-hmm. So, yes, sir. Our Vikings fans, come out and cheer these guys on so they can be as good as they possibly can be. Yeah. Uh, for Chad and Sullivan, my guy, Duke Shelley, her name is Tatum Everett. Thank you guys again for tuning into another edition of The Audible presented by 3M. 